Hi and welcome to the vitamins and minerals video. In this video we will examine vitamins and minerals and what they are used for in the body, how they are categorized, and explore foods where we can easily find these nutrients. We will also go over the limitations of using supplements as a source of these nutrients. Both vitamins and minerals are considered micronutrients which mean that they are needed in small amounts for the body. Vitamins are substances essential and help promote and regulate chemical reactions and processes in body cells. They produce red blood cells and help maintain nervous, skeletal, and immune systems. They may also act as antioxidants, which help in fighting disease. Vitamins are abundant in fruits, vegetables, and grains. They are also added in as a supplement form to some processed foods such as cereals and commercial orange juice. Vitamins are classified into two types, fat soluble and water soluble. The fat soluble vitamins, there are four of them, A, D, E, and K. Fat soluble vitamins are readily stored in the body's fat tissue and because of this they can be toxic when taken in excess. The second type of vitamin is water soluble vitamin and there are nine of them. There's vitamin C and the B complex vitamins. Water soluble vitamins are absorbed directly into the bloodstream and the excess is excreted in urine. They are not stored in the body and need to be consumed on a daily basis. If they are not, symptoms of certain diseases can occur fairly rapidly. Vitamins commonly lacking in the American diet include vitamin A, which can be found in milk, cream, eggs, butter, dark green leafy vegetables, and broccoli. Another vitamin lacking in the American diet is vitamin C. Vitamin C can be found in citrus fruits, cabbage type vegetables, tomatoes, potatoes, dark green leafy vegetables, peppers, cantaloupe, and strawberries. Another vitamin we tend to be deficient in is vitamin D. Vitamin D can be found in mushrooms, especially portobello mushrooms, fortified milk, eggs, fish, and by being in the sun. We also tend to be deficient in vitamin E, which can be found in vegetable oils, dark green leafy vegetables, whole grains, butter, milk, nuts, seeds, and fortified cereals. Minerals are another essential nutrient needed in small amounts by the body. They are compounds needed for regulation, growth, and maintenance of body tissues and functions. Major minerals, those that the body needs in amounts exceeding 100 milligrams per day, include calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, potassium, and chloride. Essential trace minerals include copper, fluoride, iodide, iron, selenium, and zinc. As with vitamins, if you consume too much or too little of a particular mineral, characteristic symptoms of excess or deficiency can develop. Typical minerals that are lacking in the American diet include iron, potassium, and calcium. Iron, which is used in red blood cells, muscles, and assists in many enzyme systems. Symptoms of deficiency could include weakness, headaches, and difficulty concentrating. Best foods for iron include beef, fish, and poultry, but iron may also be found in fortified cereals, legumes, and spinach. Potassium is used in biochemical reactions that help build protein, maintain fluid balance, and nerve impulses that contract muscles. If you are deficient in potassium, you may show signs of muscle weakness, irregular heartbeat, paralysis, confusion, or dehydration. You can find potassium in most fresh fruits, vegetables, potatoes, bananas, tomatoes, orange juice, and melons. 
Calcium is a big concern. Calcium is used to build and maintain bones, which will prevent osteoporosis. It can also help prevent colon cancer and help lower blood pressure and aid in weight loss. A common disease caused by the lack of calcium in the diet is osteoporosis, which means porous bones. Osteoporosis causes bones to become weak and brittle. A common result of this disease is fractures, most of them in the spine, hip, or wrist. Although it is often thought of as a woman's disease, osteoporosis also affects a significant number of men over the age of 75. Consider this. You build 90% of your bone mass by age 18. This is why it is so important for children and teenagers to get enough calcium in their diet. You only build 10% of your bone mass between the ages of 18 and 35. After age 35, it is about preserving the bone mass you have already acquired. It is also important for adults to consume enough calcium on a regular basis to maintain their bones. Did you know that you can lose up to 1% of your bone mass each year after age 35 if you do not consume enough calcium? which when you add it up, you can lose up to 25 to 30 percent of your bone mass by age 60. That is one-third of your bone mass. And even though we may not think of osteoporosis as a major disease, it is estimated that 25 percent of the women after the age of 50 will be di diagnosed with this disease. To prevent osteoporosis from happening to you, it is important to consume between 1,000 to 1,500 milligrams of calcium every day and remember that the body is only able to absorb 300 to 500 milligrams per meal. The body also needs vitamin D to help absorb the calcium. It is also important to do weight-bearing exercise such as weight training, running, or walking to help maintain your bone mass. Calcium can be found in many foods such as milk and soy products, green leafy vegetables such as broccoli and kale, fortified foods such as orange juice, and some types of cereals. Now for a mineral that we generally consume too much of and that is sodium. The excess of sodium in our diets can cause hypertension, water retention, and calcium loss. Most of us don't realize that our sodium intake is too high, but remember that sodium is found in high quantities in most packaged foods. You should try to keep your sodium consumption under 2400 milligrams or 2 teaspoons per day. It is harder than you think, which is why it is important to track your diet for a few weeks on a free computerized tracking program such as myfoodpyramid.gov. Now you may be thinking that you are covered in your vitamins and mineral intake without eating a balanced diet because you take a multivitamin or megavitamin that contains all the necessary micronutrients. It is difficult to generalize about the usefulness of supplements, but beware of toxicity overdose on vitamins. Yes, just because vitamins and minerals are good for you doesn't mean more is better. Matter of fact, more may be very dangerous. It is much easier to develop a toxic overdose of micronutrients from supplements than it is from foods in a well-balanced diet. Research has shown that some antioxidant supplements such as A, C, and E may actually increase the rates of death. And most minerals are not absorbed as well from supplements except for calcium-fortified orange juice, which tends to be absorbed as well as calcium from milk products. Keep in mind that the U.S. government at this time does not regulate supplements and it is possible to have too much which may cause sickness. The best advice is to eat a well-balanced diet full of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, quality proteins, and fats. Try to limit the amount of packaged foods and track your diet to see how much you, are, you really need to supplement or if you need to supplement at all. That is it for this presentation, and I wish you much health and wellness.